G'day guys, this is Andre. Um, I thought I might give you a couple of cooking ideas. So what are we cooking today? It's pretty simple. So we're just making a pan seared snapper, nice and easy, um, with a cauliflower puree, uh, a chorizo and garlic crumb, which we're using a bit of panko for, something crispy. Um, then we make like a citrus vinaigrette, which we use to dress our green beans, and that will be our dish. It's pretty simple, straightforward, nice and fresh, and crunchy. So we go on like a medium, medium high heat, which is like 75% roughly, and we're just gonna reduce it by half. So next one is, uh, I have this cool little thing here. I don't wanna advertise it, but we all know what it is. Uh, like a Nutribullet. Also, you can use a stick blender or a bar blender or whatever you like. So what I'll do, I got my half reduced grapefruit juice in here. And then I just put the lid on here, pop the lid on, jam it in here. Okay, next step, what do we need to do here? We have our orange. So the orange, I just add to get a little bit more fruitiness. And uh, then next time we move to the cauliflower. So with the cauliflower, we just cut out the core. What we do next thing is, um, we have already a pot, a pot going on here with, again, medium high heat, ideally with a big surface. Um, and we cut up our cauliflower just like, pretty chunky, doesn't have to be accurate because we're turning it into a puree. Cool. So next we're using, obviously, butter. Yeah? Butter in cooking, uh, it's not necessary, but I think to give it a good flavor, it's always uh, essential to give it, you know, fat, fatness flavor. We all know that. So I put probably like 50, 50 to 75 grams of butter in that pot that we already put on. That pot is hot by now. So that pot is smoking by now, yeah? So in order to not burn your butter, what you can do, you can mix your butter with a little bit of olive oil. So now all our butter is melted. And what we do, we just add the cauliflower into it. You can already smell the, the nuttiness. Cauliflower smells good already. The thing is, if you take your time for cooking things like this, um, by caramelizing stuff, you just bring out the flavors, caramelize the sugars, flavor gets more intense. So what we're just going to do now, I'll let back on there. Cool, next one. Uh, we go on our chorizo and garlic crumb. Garlic, we all love the garlic. How do, how do you peel some garlic, right? It's always a bit painful. So what I just do, put your garlic on the chopping board, use the back of the knife, just give it a little crack. One, two, maybe one more. We just see what it does. We give it one more. So chorizo in there. Uh, heat down a little bit because you don't want to burn it. So this is the final stage, pretty much. You see the panko is like nice and golden brown. So what we just do, we set it on a piece of paper. Okay, snapper. How do we cook a snapper, right? I think the biggest trick of cooking fish is not to overcook the fish. That's the biggest advice that I can give you. Obviously, uh, first thing you make sure the fish is dry. Yeah, pat it dry with a bit of towel. And then we got two sides, yeah? 
So we got the skin side, which I took the skin off this time, and we got the inner side. Um, if you cook a fish without the skin, cook it from the inner side. If you have a fish with the skin on, you obviously cook it on the skin side, skin off, opposite. In this case, what we use, I'll just use a little bit of salt. I don't put any pepper on there. I think for me the snapper doesn't need any pepper. And then goes our snapper. So, while our snapper is frying nicely away in the pan, we have our beautiful green beans. Yeah. Green beans, always good, you know, eat your greens, work with everything. What I'm just going, what I'm just going to do, I just cut the, the tails off. Not the tops, just the tails. So we'll cut. That's it, we leave all the rest on. We're just going to cook our beans for like a minute into the boiling water, not in the cold water, very important. 